So this project is a little bit different. Uh, in this time, I had my flashlight. And now it's not in one piece. But yeah, so this is my flashlight. And actually, it's not in. Powerful enough for me, and there was a one accident with the LED effect being this. This is the XML uh, L1 uh, from Cree. Uh, it's pretty good. It's a 10 watt chip, but it's the older. It's not the same as this. This is the XML L2, which is newer and better. It's more efficient than this LED and uh, it has better color rendering index. Uh, it really doesn't matter in uh, flashlight but it's still nice to have and actually this LED is broken. So yeah. But this time we are going to get the LED and the old driver which is this one out of it because I have these this is the Cree XHP 70 LED I chosen I have chosen the warm white because I actually had it uh, laying around uh, in my room so I already had it and this is a test setup there is a 8085 a 5 amp current sensing chip and some random um, 8 pin pack. There is a MOSFET and a inductor, and there is a lithium ion battery because this chip needs uh, oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> it needs uh, 6 volts or technically 5.8 uh, at around the current range that this can handle. So, yeah, but I it's actually currently working. But it has some small, uh, small problems, as we can see. So let's unplug the power from the USB. Let's turn on the battery down, and then let's just plug it again. And now it's on 20 or actually 200 milliamp mode. I can get this in. So now it's in 200 um, uh, milliamp mode. Uh, this flashlight has a different settings for adjusting the brightness. I will cover up the LED because it's really damn bright. So now it's consuming, it's around 200 milliamps because, or it's actually set to 250 milliamps, but it's it, it doesn't really. Uh, the ADC on the 80-85 it's not precise enough and uh, I had a like margin that it needs to be in and if I get it to like too uh, precise then it starts to flicker and that's really annoying then let's just unplug, unplug it again fuck and now we have it in 500 milliamp mode. The next is 1 amp, and the last is 2 amps. It's actually actually pretty bright at the moment, so let's get keep that in. And on the oscilloscope, when I get it to trigger correctly, uh, we have a PWM signal. At the two up mode now. Uh, actually, I need to get it to back to something like one up mode because the MOSFET overheats. Uh, so there's the PWM do the cycle. Uh, it's not reading the frequency correctly because it's around 85 kilohertz. Or it should be. Damn. 
Just do your fucking job. I want this so bad. Okay, now it has triggered. Mm. So yeah, and now the duty cycle is around uh, forty percent, and actually, when the battery gets lower on the voltage, it steps up the PWM to keep it around uh, the set amperes. So that's why there is the current limiting, or not limiting, but monitoring. I see. Uh, I originally designed it to. Uh, monitor the upper current so if I get it to power levels of uh, around the maximum so 4.8 amps but I realized that at uh, 2 amperes the MOSFET gets around 125C so yeah it overheats at uh, current levels of about half of that so and if I get to uh, 2.8 amps more uh, I'm pretty sure that the heating line gets exponentially uh, higher so uh, I just ditched the idea but uh, on the PCB that will be the same size as the original uh, it will have better cooling because it will sit on here and that's that grew and I will design a aluminium block that will be inside of this the LED will sit on there and it will provide better cooling than the just the PCB lying on this uh, edge right there for now the power source is uh, this uh, Samsung 18650 battery it's uh, 3500 mAh but uh, this cell is uh, abused a bit too much. Actually, I had a one of those uh, cheap uh, DC to DC power converters from eBay, and I had it set to 4.2 watts. And when I uh, used my multimeter across the battery the terminal uh, on the battery terminals, it showed 4.6.6 volts. Uh, for about uh, 66 volts, so 0 0.46 uh, volts of overcharge. Uh, it did not explode, and it actually works, and it uh, holds charge pretty well. So yeah. But on the flashlight, it will be powered by this uh, 26650 batteries. Uh, I, I have this and. I have a couple more uh, in the post and these are limited they have a protection IC which limits the current to a 10 amps and let's see what this thing uh, uses while in the 2 amp mode so currently it's on the 1 amp mode so let's take up the clamp meter and Zero it out and let's connect it right there. 2.5 amps on the 1 amp mode, and then the 2 amp mode 5.2 amps. Yeah, that's also a bit problematic with the uh, with the. 4.8 amp mode because at just 2 amps the battery will be drained at 5.2 amps around and this has a maximum current of 10 amps and I know for uh, from the best that uh, the protection I see that this has has uh, too high voltage drop so it will not be able to supply the current required for the 4.8 amps and this has one component missing that is a 10 kilo ohm uh, and DC thermistor that will be mounted on the PCB 
to monitor the current, no current, but the temperature of the uh, choke and the uh, MOSFET. I will not be using uh, this MOSFET, this is IRF Z44N, but I will use a smaller uh, SMD package that will have a similar current capabilities as this MOSFET, but in smaller packets. So what that means, it's more concentrated heat and it will be heating up more in faster and it really will uh, need a better cooling solution. But uh, I still think that this will be great because uh, the power that it will give in this small footprint or yeah, flashlight, yeah, it doesn't really count as footprint. But uh, for now, it will be around 10 watts. But I will be able to pro reprogram the driver to give me more current. So. Uh, 3 amps is in the code right now. It will be in, uh, enabled by just changing two parameters on the starting sequence. But then it really needs better cooling for the MOSFET.